Welcome to today's video. I have a very long one for you with a lot of special guests. Try to stick around. Everybody has something important to share here. I think it's very relevant. If you cannot finish it at once, see it in parts, but make sure you see all of it. Um, yeah, a few years ago, somebody, I met somebody here in Hong Kong, actually here in Shenguan. We had a coffee, we had a drink, we had a talk. We went to the park, we did also uh, some training together. And the guy is, uh, is skilled in that particular uh, lineage he teaches. And we had a good time, basically. Then over the years, this guy is posting and posting. And then, yeah, till I get always a lot of feedback, right, from my students and from friends. and friends that live in, uh, in, uh, here in Hong Kong, friends that live in China, and he, his name kept popping up. And then I got the last message and I said, oh, see, we, we should do something about this, this is just not correct. And I was hesitant, but I think I should address, yeah? give him credit where credit is due and correct him on some other things. I'm not the Wing Chun police, but when it concerns older lineages and directly not directly but indirectly attack some of my teachers and sifus or some of my colleagues then i just think it has to address be addressed i will not mention any name i just will go through it in order to not miss anything i will just quote him okay so we get my phone so it goes yeah i suppose starts yeah, and then says whether wing chun Wang Chun or Fing Chun, yeah, different spellings of Wing Chun. I know many wooden dummy forms and have students and friends who have been masters in their styles for years. What matters is not how old your form is or what generation it is from, which wooden dummy form contains more movements. That's completely irrelevant and even misleading. Spot on. Yeah? So it really does not matter. He is right with this. Yeah? I agree 100%. Now, the only thing that counts is whether your wooden dummy includes all the principal movements and if there is a physical rational explanation of why there cannot be a better solution in this situation. Uh, yeah, it's, in my opinion, half right because different wooden dummy forms have different situations, have different choreographies, different situations uh, in their mind. So. There is not one choreography that can cover all uh, situations. The concepts or the principles can cover all situations. Yeah, So it's not really written well or whatever uh, he means. But if he goes into principles and concepts, he's right. If it goes into different choreographies, he's, he's not right, right? Now, here's my point. What is little known, especially that especially Yip Man and some of his most loyal students have been known to fight against such Kung Fu myths and fairy tales. Uh, against what Kung Fu myth, uh, myths and what fairy tales? I mean, most of the wooden dummy forms that I learned, the different wooden dummy forms, and I learned quite a lot. I learned the Lung Ting version of the, the Yip Man. I learned the Wang Q version of the Yip Man. I learned the Yip Ching version of the Yip Man, yeah, Yip Man San. Then I learned the Yunke San wooden dummy. I learned the Siu Lam low family wooden dummy. I learned the Tang Yik wooden dummy forms. I learned quite a lot of dummy forms and all had something to offer. They all had a, a focus point that really opened up my mind and gave me a different skill level. For example, the Leung Ting version that was very uh, focused on making every point clear. Tak right and the Tang Yik version was very sticky uh, with a lot of uh, issuing of energy push and pull you know just to give you an example they, they were all very relevant so it's it's absolutely uh, not true that they were fighting against certain myths or fairy tales which myths and fairy tales, okay? You have to be more specific. And then he continues, they had a unique scientific approach 
that resulted in hundreds of victorious uh, in combat situations. Now, that's, that's not true. You had rooftop fights in Hong Kong in the 1950s, 40s. Yeah, there were rooftop fights. And some of Yip Man's students had very good results, like uh, Wong Chun Leung, the late Wong Chun Leung. But also the late Wong Chun Leung, people don't want to hear it, but also had a, a few losses and one in, in Taiwan. Although he was probably one of the best Wing Chun fighters at the time of the, of the Yip Man clan, he's just human. Every fighter in history, no matter Mike Tyson, no matter, every good fighter loses one time. Yeah? That's how you improve. There's no invincible people. Yeah? Now, that, that they won hundreds of fights, no. Even if you take all the fighters of the Yip Man family that did all these rooftop fights back then, there were not hundreds of fights, okay? So, they sharpened their weapons and in a focused manner and right there, they sharpened their weapons in a focused manner. They created a method that clearly differs from older or parallel Wing Chun lineages. Uh, no. I mean, Yip Man taught many different versions during his lifetime, also in Hong Kong to different students. And that has uh, several reasons that I, I don't want to go in here too much. Yeah, but it's absolutely not to, be, to make a more superior version than he did. I beg to differ even that, you know, you go to Foshan right now, to mainland China, and you meet Kwok Wai Jam, which is the son of Kwok Fu, and Kwok Fu was one of the first students, actually, uh, of Yip Man in Fatsan. You go there, you touch hands, you see what he's doing. There's a big case to be made that that stuff is highly effective and in some ways even superior to the stuff Yip Man was teaching here in Hong Kong. So, you know, you can't, you, you can't say that. So that's, that's very important to realize, yeah? There's some more stuff here, but I, I don't want to go into that. Important is realizing that, yes, there are some wooden dummy forms out there, that just have another choreography for the sake of choreography. And then I agree, like his beginning of his post, right? But there are so many lineages out there with very relevant stuff and stuff that can't be found by any of uh, Yip Man's Hong Kong students. Yeah, so then you have to go to mainland China and even study maybe some other Wing Chun lineages. And not to say that that is better, that is worse. It's just a different approach and a different angle because you can only see the things from your point of view. But to say, what I'm doing, I have, I'm the only one that has the truth. This is the only way. That is completely ridiculous. Yeah? There are many roads leading to Rome. So let me introduce you now to the people that are actually in this video. The first one is my friend Jesper Lundqvist that I know from all the way back in the 90s when he was living in Copenhagen in Denmark and I was living in Amsterdam in the Netherlands and he would used to come down to Amsterdam so we interact in the Lungting system that he and I was doing at the time. Then he moved to mainland China and his journey there started he studied with uh, Wong Nim Yi, some Yun Kei San Wing Chun Sifus, Gulo Wing Chun, uh, lineage of the brother of uh, Yun Kei San, Yun Chai Wan. Then now he studies also with uh, Kwok Wai Jam, the son of Kwok Fu. Kwok Fu being a close student of uh, Yip Man in the early days, in the 1940s. Yeah, so he's in this video. Then next one, my very good friend, Kleber Battaglia who studied Wong Chun Leung uh, Wing Chun in Europe, then came to live in Hong Kong for, I think, four years to study with uh, Wang Kam Leung Sifu. Then he went on to live in mainland China, in Shanghai. And yeah, he, he and me are, and Jesper actually were like a triangle, me in Hong Kong, he in Shanghai, Jesper in Foshan. We're always interacting talking about Kung Fu, doing research, exchanging, training together. So that's that. 
we are the ones that living here. Now, of course, the other one in this video that also lives here is Sifu San Iso, uh, my Sifu in Wengchun, who is also a master in Fujian White Crane. He's an important uh, part also of all the research because, yeah, he was one of the students of the late Grand Master Tang Yik, and he is in regular contact with all the Wengchun Sifus uh, in mainland China. So he is in here. Then we have my student Sifu Mauro Jibin, who is the chief instructor of IWK Italy. And then we have Yuri Morelli in here, who also studied Lung Ting Wing Chun and Wang Chun and started up his own association in spreading these arts uh, throughout Italy and I think also South America. He did some seminars in, I think, Argentina. So, yeah, together we, we made something, I think, valuable and needed. So let's give it now to Jesper. Okay, hi guys. Uh, my name is Jesper Lundqvist. I'm a long-time practitioner of, of uh, martial arts. I started training in Japanese martial arts in 1984 and in 1991 I discovered Wing Chun. Uh, over the years I had the privilege of learning from many different seafoods and uh, learning a number of or training in a number of um, different Wing Chun styles. Um, so because of that I have a very good idea about how different styles um, train the wooden dummy and uh, why they train it and how it is trained. Yes. So the, it is very important to understand that the different schools have different methods. And the reason they have different methods is because they, they have some ideas which are fundamentally different. So we cannot, so if, if we have the take the perspective of one style, we cannot look at what other styles are doing and then pass judgment on whether or not this makes sense or whether or not this is wrong or whether or not this is right. Um, because wrong or right depends on perspective. So, uh, and also, uh, I think it's important to understand that there is not just one method which is the best. Uh, there are many methods, and many things can work. Right? So, the, if you look at the wooden dummy practice of different Kung Fu styles, or Wing Chun styles, more spe specifically, you'll find out that not every Wing Chun style has a wooden dummy form. Not every Wing Chun style is trained trains the, the wooden dummy for at least a few generations back they didn't. Uh, another thing you will find out is that different schools have different choreographies. And so some choreographies are longer, some are shorter, um, some are um, some have very simple techniques, some have more complex techniques and the way um, the dummy is trained, the techniques are trained, is also different. So the, the, the quality and the types of movements are different. So for example, some schools will uh, emphasize releasing force into the dummy and move very fast. So, so they will uh, simulate the speed and the power released in a real fight. Others uh, emphasize speed and flowing, um, tying, tying movements together in flowing motions, while others um, are more deliber deliberate and focus on uh, the execution of singular techniques to make sure that every point is is clear. Um, and others will, um, when they practice, will kind of will stick more to the dummy and slide along the dummy arms and uh, use pushing pulling motions, and while others are applying um, what we can call like a point force. A point force means like like a short uh, release of force into the dummy. So there are many, many ways. Um, and as I said, what is correct depends on the purpose. Thank you, Jesper. So now on to another friend of mine, Sifu Kleber. So for the people that don't know me, uh, 
Now let's make a very, very quick, I'll try to summarize my background because people might say, who is this guy? So basically I've been dedicating my life to martial arts since I was nine. I studied different styles like Japanese Jiu Jitsu, Western Boxing, Pankaxilat, uh, Kali Eskrima. But what I mostly fall in love was Chinese Kung Fu through Wing Chun. So I started Wing Chun mostly in the Wing Chun lineage. So I dedicate most uh, part of the uh, journey of uh, Wing Chun through the Wang Shun Long Wing Chun when I started. So I started with uh, uh, Sifu Nino Bernardo, Sifu Clyde Potter, Sifu Gary Lam, and this when I was in Europe. Then I met my actual Sifu uh, Wang Kam Lam that created practical Wing Chun from the Wang Shun Long, and I decided to move to Hong Kong to study with him. Uh, then from Hong Kong, I spent uh, four and a half years in Hong Kong studying with Wang Kam Lam and meeting uh, other people because I also am one of the main writer of the Wing Chun Illustrated magazine. So I meet and interview Wing Chun Sifus from all around the world and I met many of them when I was in Hong Kong, of course. Then I moved to mainline China, to Shanghai to teach and I've been here for almost nine years now. Uh, so since I'm in mainline China, I dedicate my life into two main things. One, to study other type of Kung Fu, what they call internal styles. And the other one is to go to, for some recently, to uh, study what Wing Chun was before getting to Hong Kong. So I honestly suggest from my heart to those people watching you know, or sign up for uh, those courses of those people claiming to be experts of a thing that they actually never deeply study and they never actually came here to China. I suggest look around, look who are considered the expert on this thing, look the actual people that moved to China to study with these people, people like Sifu Sergio Yadarola, uh, Sifu Jasper Lundquist, uh, other people that moved here in China to be close to these people, to really gain the real knowledge from these people. Um, because we are all friends between each other. None of us claim to just have the real knowledge, the original source of Wing Chun. So all of us, on a daily basis, we text each other, we compare our researches, we discuss, we touch hands, we see what's behind. We are trying to bring back Wing Chun, the history of Wing Chun, on a certain level of clarity that is missing nowadays. So please, Always be careful of these people claiming they are the only one having access to certain knowledge and they never came here because uh, you can see that there is kind of discrepancy in certain claims. So again, in Hong Kong, they only had the main vision that came from Ip Man Wing Chun. But that is not the only vision that there is upon Wing Chun. There is a lot, a lot of knowledge in mainland China, especially in the Guangdong area, about Wing Chun about many different approaches of Wing Chun. And when people claim that they have a certain kind of secret knowledge just because I've been like a few times in China for a couple of weeks, um, I truly suggest to people to really open up their mind and think like, okay, people that dedicated their life to move there, to study what there is there, and they're still there, keep researching and studying, while other just you know, comes once in a while and do certain claims like, yeah, yeah, this will show everything to me. They just be a little bit suspicious because when they do certain kind of claims, again, they only want to gain either economical advantage or they're just purely ignorant. So I just suggest them to get a little bit more informed of what the reality in China is. And for all the people that I hope to inspire that they really have a passion for Wing Chun, Come to China, come to see what there is here. Meet those seafoods and see it for yourself. Just don't believe me, just see it for yourself. How amazing these people still are and the amount of knowledge that they still have it in their hands. And not many people actually want to approach them because they believe that the only true tune is still only in Hong Kong. On to Sifu Sunny Sol, my Sifu in Tang Yik Wang Chun. Today I, will talk, I want to talk about the wooden dumbbell of Wang Chun. In our Wang Chun, mainly we have two systems, uh, two dumbbells, the heaven and the human. Uh, for the human, uh, for the heaven, mainly it's concentrated on the center line. 
and no matter is heaven or human, the most important part is the stick. We have to be our hand should be able to stick it and to control the egos out of the opponent. Okay? Like for example, when I do this, see, my hand is doing like moving like a snake. Okay? It's still creating a sticky while I'm uh, controlling the ego. My ego is out, it's controlling the ego is out on my opponent as well. Okay? So that is a main, one of the main points. And then for the uh, human dummy, uh, the first part, the first half part of the human and heaven are more or less very similar to each other. But for the human dummy, the second part, we concentrate, one of the concentrations is on the moving in. Like for example, this and this. That is the training of the moving in. Uh, one is to control the enemy and then moving in means you can take down. So that is the one of the major training of the human dummy. Now we move on to my student, Sifumaru Jibin. I'll let him do the talking, but of course, he is the head of the IWK in Italy. Important point that I just want to put in here, IWK means Internal Wisdom and Knowledge Association, or could better say in English, IWK stands for Internal Wisdom and Knowledge Association. Yeah? Because that's some questions I get always. They say, oh, International Wing Chun Kung Fu Association. No, since 10 years already, it's not anymore like that. Okay, let Maro do his talk. Many years ago, I started my journey in Vinchen. I was here in Italy and I felt in love with this amazing heart. And this love and this passion pushed me to um, complete this system in, in the best way, to learn this system in the best way, uh, looking for the knowledge, the um, application, the skill, the wisdom, everything. This was my idea in the beginning. And of course, I was... Um, busy with the Hipman Vinchen because at, the, at that moment in uh, my view was the only uh, Vinchen existing. But then af after many years I decided in 2009 to go for the first time in Hong Kong to see directly at the source what was the situation of Vinchen. And I had the luck to meet my uh, actual Sifu, my Sifu Sergio, that opened my mind completely in uh, one shot. So for the first time, I started to hear about other lineages, uh, not just the Hipman one. And this makes me so curious that I uh, made my best, I made my best to start to learn it. And I remember the first experience with, was with the Tange Vinchen. Um, and this shocked me quite a lot, especially with the weapon thing. The wooden dummy was, uh, uh, completely uh, different in terms of geography, of course, but this is the most important thing. Um, in that system, learning that system, I was learning different concepts, not different. I cannot say it was something opposite than the beginning, but was to complete the overview. You know, many times every school, every teacher do a little bit different. So you have variation of the same form of the same concept this master do a little bit more like this, this one with uh, maybe two extra movements, somebody with one less. That's not the key. In my opinion, that's not the key. What is important that everybody has to be open mind and look for uh, um, the complete picture. It must be the, the concept and what can bring you skill and knowledge. This is the key point. So based on my experience, when I start to learn uh, different valuable systems, from uh, very valuable masters because I had the luck with my Sifu to go and uh, learn directly with, uh, for example, uh, Grandmaster Chen Kuang in, uh, in Hong Kong for, from the Low family with uh, Sifu Saniso and uh, many others during this year because also in uh, uh, 2012 and 2013 I moved to Hong Kong. Uh, I rent a house there because I was very deep into the study. I, I really realized the uh, 
uh, importance to be close to the source, to learn completely uh, all this uh, system and these views and this lesson that came completely, that changed completely my Kung Fu, my, my Vinci. So that was the biggest investment in my life because I spent uh, every year with uh, many months in Hong Kong till, as I said, I lived there for, um, for one year. And that this really gave me uh, a bigger perspective of the system. And in terms of skill, I made a huge jump. And the beauty is that I see nowadays um, our students do the same jump when they come from another uh, school, another association with uh, maybe a good base, a great uh, perspective of this uh, system. When they get in touch with concept, with uh, a different uh, body mechanic, with uh, a concept, with principle that change the perspective, they is like they 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 have they become another. Uh, practitioner. They, it, it's really like a new DNA you put in your body and this in my opinion makes people really complete in uh, Kung Fu invention. So yeah, this is the, the thing. We will have to be open mind and try to get the information in the best way and practice in the best way. Now on to my last guest for this video, Sifu Yuri Morelli. 2014, he visited me on one of my internal Wing Chun seminars at the time. Actually, it was the 2014 summer camp, if I'm not mistaken. And that inspired him to start his study with uh, the Tang Yik system directly here in Hong Kong. And uh, I will let him do the talking and enjoy. Hi everybody, I am Sifu Yuri from Italy, the founder of TWA Association. I studied Deep and Minchun for more than uh, 22 years. And from 2014, I am uh, a student of the Grandmaster Michael Tang. I have traveled to Hong Kong several times and I have been able to see many versions of the dummy forms. And I can say that there are no secret forms. Every single version can be very, very helpful for the student. And because the truth can't be in a single person. How can I say one form is better than the other? And especially how can I say venture form are not good for fighting? I have a spirals, I have push and pull, I have a change of footwork, I, have, I work on hitting power. I have all necessary for fighting. So as you can see, the general consensus from all these people, right, is that there is not a superior or one superior system developed, you know, and especially here uh, in Hong Kong, not by special group of Yip Man students that only them got the special concepts and the special techniques and only by them you can find the truth and the most effective distillation of uh, Yip Man's teachings and blah, 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 blah. That is just crap, baloney, not true, okay? So many lineages that hold value. And yes, there are some Sifus out there who just add more movements for the sake of movements. Then I agree, not necessary. But most of the authentic lineages, they have very valuable stuff. And I'm myself guilty of falling into that trap, right? When I was doing the Lung Ting system, I thought that's, that's the only truth. That is the only... Till somebody really opened my mind. The first, first one was actually uh, Sifu Alan Fong, who wrote something in the Wing Chun Kun for me. He said, uh, open your mind, Sergio. There is more out there. So then I got shocked several times because also with the Yip Man Wing Chun, I thought I've seen it all. And then even me having been already to Fatsan and interacting with Yip Man's first students like Lung Kai, but then all of a sudden, Kwa Kwai Jam opens up to, to, to Jesper, to, to Clever, and wow, another angle comes towards me. And I thought, I've seen it all. No, again, something very important to learn there. Yeah, and something that really improved 
your Wing Chun, can improve your Wing Chun. So it's important to quote Frank Zappa, uh, Italian by the way, the mind is like a parachute. It only works when it's open. I'll leave you with that.